All right, everybody, it's been a hot minute since we've had an update on, uh, on Joel. And so I figured I would take this opportunity to give everybody another update on this amazing man, as well as why he is currently having issues. And as you can probably tell from the title of this video, he's currently dealing with hypercalcemia, which is when you have a high concentration of calcium in the blood. So I wanted to touch base on calcium metabolism very simply and generally speaking, as well as what possible diseases there are in patients that have hypercalcemia, and then what most likely correlates with what Joel's going through. So he's currently readmitted into the hospital because he's feeling sick, and their thinking is that maybe the high calcium is making him sick. So let's talk about calcium metab metabolism in general. The body keeps a very tight hold on what concentration of calcium you have. So it's a very tight range. It doesn't really like it or let it get either too low or too high from that range. And so when things go out of whack and the body is dealing with high or low calcium, then you know something is really messed up because the body does not like to get that calcium above or below that range. It's a very narrow window. And so calcium is a, is a complex metabolic process in terms of keeping a homeostasis in the body. So the organs involved with calcium include the parathyroid glands, the intestinal system, kidneys, liver, bone. And so we won't go into the finer points as far as how all those things connect, but basically the main hormone that we're gonna discuss here is called parathyroid hormone or PTH. Parathyroid hormone comes from the parathyroid glands that are, that are there's, there's uh, four of them, and they sit on the thyroid glands themselves. And when the calcium gets out of whack, the parathyroid's job is to release parathyroid hormone to try and reset the calcium back to normal. So if you are looking at calcium from the standpoint of the parathyroid hormone, then there is three effects that it has. It affects the intestines with regard to vitamin D, it affects bone in terms of calcium in the bone, and it affects the kidneys in terms of reabsorbing vitamin D. And so we will leave the normal metabolism of calcium and how parathyroid hormone relates with that. When there is low calcium levels for whatever reason, whether it's vitamin D or kidney disease or intestinal disease, which we're gonna to touch on next, when there's an abnormality with calcium, the body tells the parathyroid glands to release parathyroid hormone. The parathyroid hormone then has to go and do its thing by acting on bone, intestine, and kidney to increase those calcium levels back to normal. So that's what we're gonna focus on, that. So when things are out of range, then the body gets really sick. And so that brings us to what are the possibilities that causes a patient to have high calcium levels? And so there's a there's kind of a list, but basically we'll go through each one. Um, I'll, li I'll list them out and then we'll talk about how they differentiate from each other. So there could be something wrong with the actual parathyroid gland, right? If there's a tumor or if there's hyperplasia, meaning an overgrowth of the parathyroid gland, it'll produce way too much parathyroid hormone. And that'll make the calcium go up even though there's something wrong with the calcium in the body itself. It's doing this on its own accord, it's unregulated. So if you have a parathyroid adenoma, which is a benign growth or parathyroid hyperplasia, which is an excess uh, number of cells in the parathyroid gland, then that'll create the calcium to go up. The second common cause of of high calcium is due to what's called um, hypercalcemia of malignancy. What that means is, in cases of malignancy, which is malignant cancer, the cancer produces a, a hormone that is like parathyroid hormone. We actually call it PTHRP, or parathyroid hormone-related protein, PTHRP. And so when you have cancer of specific types, it releases this kind of fake hormone or this hormone that's mimicking parathyroid hormone and then that does the same thing that an overproduction of parathyroid hormone would do. It increases calcium. And you see that with a certain number of cancers. The, a third condition is called Addison's disease. Addison's disease, also known as hypoadrenocorticism, which is a, a condition whereby the adrenal glands that make cortisol hormone are no longer producing cortisol hormone and the cortisol, cortisol hormone goes down and through a complex array of, of mechanics, the calcium then um, goes up and you end up with hypercalcemia. And so we'll leave it at that. It's a hormonal disease that re that's from adrenal glands that are not producing the right steroid hormone, cortisol. Then you can have excessive vitamin D, either too much ingestion of vitamin D or something is inherently wrong in the body that's causing the vitamin D levels to go up. That of course will then relate to what we talked about earlier with parathyroid hormone, and then up goes the calcium. 
Kidney disease, kidney failure can also cause high parathyroid through calcium, through vitamin D, and through phosphorus levels. Um, the calcium and phosphorus values in your body are tightly, are also tightly, uh, have a tight relationship. So when one is out of whack, the other tries to change to, to, to accommodate for that. So in cases like kidney disease, where phosphorus does go up, that'll then of course affect the calcium, and that'll create high parathyroid levels, which then causes the hypercalcemia. And then finally, inflammation. Any kind of inflammatory process, but especially chronic inflammation, chronic being it's been going, meaning it's been going on for a long time. So common conditions like that include fungal disease, or if you have chronic inflammation for any other reason, um, you'll end up with high calcium levels. And so those are kind of big factors. There are other things that can cause high calcium. For example, if you have like a bone tumor and your, the bone is literally leak, the calcium is literally leaking out of the bones, that's another reason for it. But we're going to kind of stick to the main, the main categories here. Um, you can have high calcium because you're being supplemented high calcium or they gave you the wrong injection at the hospital or something. There's, there's other reasons for it, um, but we're going to leave it at, at that. So you either have a parathyroid gland issue, you either have cancers producing a, a parathyroid hormone that's sort of a, a mimic version of it. You can have Addison's disease, which is a cortisol uh, uh, disease. You can have high vitamin D levels, you can have kidney disease, and you can have inflammation. And so we use blood tests to try and figure out what are the categories you're dealing with. Now, sure, sometimes blood tests are not enough and you could have more than one condition. So for example, you can have kidney disease, but then the kidney disease causes the parathyroid hormone to go up, which acts like having parathyroid hyperplasia. So that, that, that's a very common scenario that all relates to each other. So you can have more than one condition, but we're gonna keep it separate. Or we're gonna keep it rather simple for this conversation. So we already learned now that calcium is, is kept at a very small window of concentration that involves the kidney, the liver, the intestine, bone, etc. Parathyroid hormone is one, is one hormone that's of major importance in keeping th calcium levels normal. There are other factors, of course, as well, but we're sticking to a very simple conversation. So parathyroid hormones, um, if, it's, if calcium is out of whack, it could be messing up the parathyroid gland or the parathyroid gland is, act, is overacting and messing up the calcium levels. And then you can have a different category of diseases that, that result in this. You can have parathyroid adenoma, you can have um, more hyperplasia, you can have cancer, Addison's disease, vitamin D uh, abnormalities, kidney disease, and chronic inflammation. So let's look at Joel. Could Joel have the parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia? It's possible. It'd be an odd coincidence that all of a sudden he develops a benign tumor of the parathyroid gland, but it's, it's a possibility. Um, the the uh, hyperplasia, the, the excess number of cells is more likely, probably in his situation, and it's probably secondary to something else that's going on internally. Could he have cancer? It's possible, sure, but you know, we're kind of thinking that so that'd be an odd, an odd uh, um, uh, concurrent condition to have all of a sudden an otherwise healthy uh, um, uh, adult male in his upper 30s. So, so cancer, probably not. Addison's disease, that's the low cortisol uh, test or low cortisol disease. Again, that's probably a separate disease. Could he have that? I guess. But there are also other other conditions that you should see in people like vomiting and diarrhea, not eating, um, electrolyte abnormalities. And so as far as I know, Joel doesn't have these things. Vitamin D, excess vitamin D levels, it's possible, but you know, no, no one's been giving him vitamin D. He's not eating foods all of a sudden or spend, that have a lot, a lot of vitamin D in them or spending time in the sun getting a lot of vitamin D, so probably not. Could he have kidney disease? Well, he does have a history of kidney stones. He also went through kidney failure during his COVID, his intense COVID um, uh, comatose ventilator situation that he had. So it's possible that he has kidney disease now that's recurred and is causing this. However, again, as far as I know, I don't think his blood work showed that his kidney values were high. So maybe, maybe not. And then finally, chronic inflammation. And this is what I think he probably has going on that's causing his high calcium. I suspect he probably has, his body's been undergoing such long-term and intense inflammation pretty much since the get-go that, um, that calcium levels are gonna go, gonna go up from that. And so that's, that's kind of where my, my thought is. So most likely he probably has chronic inflammation that's causing this. Second, my second guess, he, he, it could be kidney related, which is called renal secondary hyperparathyroidism. And the other things, cancer, the cortisol disease, the vitamin D thing, probably not related. Parathyroid hormone, uh, adenoma, benign tumor, probably not related either. So I'm gonna go with, he either has some sort of chronic inflammation, which would make sense, or he's got kidney disease, which also would make sense. 
Um, and then finally, you know, why, let's, let's focus on why would high calcium even make somebody sick? And there's many reasons for that, but basically, if you have a high level, amount of calcium, it deposits itself into, into organs and it'll go into usually the, the kidneys is, is the main, is the main uh, source of illness that you have from, from calcium deposition. Now, calcium can deposit itself anywhere, in muscles and ligaments, lungs, whatever, vessels, but um, the kidneys are, are get hit really hard. And the second thing is calcium is involved with, with muscle function and they're very important muscles in the body like the heart or blood vessels. Um, and so if calcium deposits or an intestines and so if, if calcium is not normal then the, then the muscular contractions that keep the heart going that keeps the intestines going keep muscles going isn't functioning correctly then you've got a problem and that that also makes people sick and animals sick so you want to get those calcium levels under control because it does cause things like problems with intestinal motility that that relates to nausea not wanting to eat vomiting diarrhea constipation and it also could affect blood vessels and mus muscle tissue. So you wanna make sure that the calcium levels are back down to normal. So um, these are, this is of course a very